Good morning, good morning guys. We're back at it again with another video. Just keep moving along. So the Eve trim piece, I did get confirmation that I'm gonna get it on Monday. So I hopefully I get it then. And then we can install the rest of the roof. Sweet. But in the meantime, today's Saturday. Um, my buddy Jake is coming in from Phoenix today. He wanted to check out the place. And I was like, well, we might as well put your ass to work. So we're gonna be building the partition wall that's gonna separate kind of like the main garage area from where my shop area is gonna be. So the wall is gonna start there, come down here, essentially almost following this line right here, come straight to the wall, and then there's gonna be essentially a place in there where there's gonna be a double door, and that's pretty much it. Got the chaw, uh, saw, chop saw. Got the chop saw, got my pneumatic nailer. So we're just going back to the days when I was framing up the walls for the tiny house. Still remember how to do it, so we're all good for that. And with any type of project that I do from scratch, um, I always do a diagram or a 3D model in SketchUp just so that I can physically see how everything is gonna go together. So the wall is gonna go up in three sections. That one, this one, you can't really tell the difference on the screen. And then this last section here. Um, that way I know exactly how it's all gonna go together, how many pieces of lumber that I'm gonna need for the entire thing. So it's really good just to do something like this beforehand, just so that you're not gonna make any boo-boos. And just with how the garage is constructed, we'll actually have to shorten this end stud and just kind of notch it over and then go up. And then we'll just have to do the same on that side there. That's the only uh, kind of difference that you're gonna see from the actual end product. But we got that nice double door there. It's gonna be sweet. And sweet indeed it is. We've got Miss High Carb Hannah coming out and helping out today. Oh my God. I know a lot of you guys think that Hannah never wants to come out and help, and why doesn't Hannah ever come out and help? Well, sometimes she just doesn't really want to, but uh, there's certain certain projects that I do that she's like, yeah, I really want to get into that. So I really admire her for doing that because she's not one just to sit around and watch me work. She wants to get in there, do a lot of the cutting, and do a lot of these things herself. So I gave her a quick tutorial on how to do 16 foot on center framing. So we're just marking the, the top frame or the top plate and the bottom plate here. And we're making a line going across, which is gonna be the end of the stud. And then we're making an X where the actual stud is gonna be going or which side of the line the stud is gonna be going on. She really enjoyed getting out there, cutting some wood um, and really kind of seeing how all this goes together. Afterwards, she said that she really appreciates all the work that I do just because um, she didn't really realize how much time and effort a lot of these things take. So that was really cool to be able to, you know, work with her, um, work with your wife and do it in a way that's fun and exciting. And uh, yeah, it was, it was really nice for her to come out and help me out with this. Now that we've got the top plate and the bottom plate finished, we can just cut all of our studs to the correct distance that we need and just start laying them out. <laughs> Watch your hand. really hope ACDC doesn't copy strike this video just from <laughs> some of the background music there but now I'm just going across quickly nailing um, all the studs to the top plate there so using the pneumatic nailer for this definitely really fast really quick and um, you can you could certainly use screws it just takes a lot more time and um, I would say the strength is pretty pretty similar um, now on the bottom plate I'm attaching a piece of sill gasket so we don't want our, our um, untreated lumber to be um, in direct contact with the concrete floor. Um, so the sill gasket just gives it a little bit of a uh, little bit of a break there. And now I'm drilling all the holes that are going through the bottom plate where we're going to be attaching our concrete anchors to secure the bottom of the uh, of the wall directly to the concrete floor. So from there, what we want to do next is square off the wall. Um, it's not 100% necessary for this style of wall because um, the one end is just going to be sliding up against uh, the side of the building. But definitely when we're raising the wall up, it's nice to have it nice and square 
and to attach some extra bracing so that the wall doesn't rack. So that's what we're doing here. Um, so we measured across both diagonals, made sure that they're both the same. And then you can actually see we've got our helper Jake here now, and he's just helping me finish this off. And so we're just using, I think, probably some three inch screws to, to attach the bracing to the, uh, to the studded wall. Now I can put the lift in place so that when we lift the wall, the wall is not going to um, go past vertical. Um, but I was actually able to surprise that we're both able to get this wall up no problem just because I knew it was going to be pretty heavy and obviously with how tall it is it can be a little bit awkward and the wall was probably maybe about a sixteenth of an inch or maybe about an eighth of an inch too tall so I just had to gently coerce it under the truss there. Um, it might have been like the sill gasket or something like that just added a little bit of extra um, length to it but it was actually nice that it had a snug fit there. Uh, just because if the wall is not snug up against that upper truss, then getting that wall um, nice and squared up and plumbed up can be a little bit more tricky. But it was actually kind of nice that um, it was a tight fit and it actually made the wall going up a little bit easier. And now I'm using the hammer drill to drill out um, the concrete for the anchors. Uh, Jake actually put that tape on there, but we found that the tape wasn't going deep enough, so we had to go a little bit deeper with it anyways. But um, that is a good little tip just to make sure that all of your holes going into the concrete are going to be at approximately the same depth. Um, something else that we did here that is going to annoy some of you. Here it is. Oh no, we're using an adjustable wrench. <laughs> I know a lot of you guys got really annoyed that we're using an adjustable wrench when we're doing the base rails uh, for the... Uh, for the uh, for the garage there and again getting the second wall up no problemo just the two of us and it was great working with jake he's a, a budding architect and is really knowledgeable about construction and also design and i think he's in his early 20s and he's been working on some really um, impressive homes in the phoenix area um, i went and visited him on one job site and i think the house was like worth four million dollars or something it was really cool obviously not really our style or our price point but it was cool just to kind of see a really really big house like that and see all the internal workings of it but now we got miss v gang miss hannah coming out again hopping out um, with attaching the uh, the plywood to the uh, to the studs here and so what i'm doing here on the plywood what you're going to see at the bottom of the pieces is that i put a bunch of spacers down so there's spacers that i use when i'm doing uh, a floating floor um, just to keep the plywood from being in direct contact with the concrete. It bumps it up maybe about an eighth of an inch or so, and I'm also going across and making sure that the 16 on center is consistent across the uh, across the studs at the top of the first piece of plywood and getting a nail in there. Uh, just because these pieces of wood are long, they're 16 foot pieces, so they can um, start to get a little bit wavy and start to get a little bit curvy. So it's a good idea when you're putting up that first piece of drywall or plywood or whatever it is, is that those studs are still going to be 16 foot on center or 16 inch on center going all the way up again using the pneumatic nailer it's much faster than using screws some people just like using screws um, so it's really kind of a personal preference but just for um, I guess the speed of the job I just like to get these things done relatively quick so the pneumatic nailer makes this much much faster and something that you don't see us wearing here but you'll see in future video clips is actually wearing some uh, some ear protection because these pneumatic nailers they are really loud and it's not as not as quite as loud as a gunshot going off but uh, it is almost kind of like a shotgun or something like that going off in your ear multiple times per day so in order to get the pieces up um, on the third and fourth level. So this wall is 16 feet tall, so we're using essentially just four pieces of plywood going up, um, just using the lift there. Um, when I had the lift, I was trying to think of everything that I could do with it while I had it, just to get the most bang out of uh, the most bang for my buck out of it. So we're able to lift the plywood sheets up onto the lift, and then Hannah and I were able to get them secured into place. She did some nailing herself, and uh, she's not too fond of using the pneumatic nailer, but she was getting it done anyways. So once we got all these pieces going across the top, then I could come down and finish off some of the. Uh, some of, some of the end pieces of the plywood here. So here's how, or my little trick for cutting plywood super straight without having a table saw. So I just use a long level here. So it's just my door level that I use for a lot of different things and some quick clamps. And I know that there's an inch and a half offset from the side of the circular saw to the blade. So I can get very precise cuts with this. And again, attaching the rest of the plywood in the same way, just using the spacers at the bottom 
and you can see me here struggle trying to get this last, um, well not this last piece, but to get a piece of half inch plywood up by myself to cover the uh, cover the door opening there. Um, you can kind of pre-cut these pieces um, when you're going around a door frame, but it, it's, I would say it's much easier to actually just put the full sheets up and then cut it out afterwards just so that um, the plywood is going to be perfectly flush with, with, the, uh, with the door frame here. So I was just being impatient. I could have had Hannah help me, but I got one nail in here to act as kind of like a... Uh, like a fulcrum point and then lifted up the other end to get the uh, the edge of the plywood squared up with the other piece get a couple more nails into it and then we are good to go all right guys so we got the plywood all finished for this side of the partition wall the other side we're going to leave open until we get some insulation in it um, but to cut basically the openings out essentially what i did was just a plunge cut with the uh, with the skill saw and then just went across like that i just uh, forgot to film that Awesome guys, thanks so much for watching. Next project that we're gonna be doing inside the garage here is gonna be the mezzanine level, so putting in the second floor, um, and then also getting the service run to the garage here so that we have some electricity going on. Awesome guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next video. Talk to you soon. Peace.